reveal the subtle tactics that they both might use to control their partners. From hidden clues... Clues... Okay, guys, this um, commentary that I'm giving is on this um, Okay, guys, this commentary that I'm giving is on uh, clues, the video clues, Megan and Amber are narcissists. Um, of course, all this is alleged. This is from the Internet. I don't know either one of these women. So let's just watch this video and com comment on it and see if we can find any clues that Megan and Amber are narcissists. All right. Amber Heard and Megan Markle share strong narcissistic traits and their body language and behavior reveal the subtle tactics that they both might use to control their partners. From hidden clues in Johnny's body language that showed he may actually have been scared and nervous around Amber, to Harry's telltale signs that he lets Megan dominate him. Both Amber and Megan seem to use the same nonverbal tricks to manipulate their partners into confirming their own lies. First, let's study Johnny and Prince Harry's anxious behavior when around Amber and Megan to see clear signs of the control these women have. Watch how Johnny almost constantly has his chin tucked in and deliberately tries to keep... Okay, first off, Johnny does look very uncomfortable. And notice his finger is uh, cut. Remember, if you saw the trial, she threw a bottle at him and that's how he cut his finger. So, yeah, that's not looking good so far on Amber's part distance between him and amber it could be a sign that he feels threatened did you notice his heavy anxious breathing looking down in a way and avoiding eye contact with amber as well as when he's looking down in a way he's sucking on his finger to pacify his distress johnny also looks at amber first before answering questions this tells us that he could feel insecure around her but pay close attention to amber's forced smile see how it looks fake Remember it, because we will get back to it. Now, look at this awkward instance between Megan and Harry, where he looks just as uncomfortable and on edge as Johnny did. His special... Yeah, I noticed that both of these women, they look so comfortable. But the men, they just look like they're nervous, anxious. Like, what is going on here? I almost wonder, are these women, like, are they triggering these men before they go out? Are they giving subtle hints that, hey, you're not good enough? We pay close attention to their thumb war. But Megan is still fighting for that outside dominance. She's still driven. She's still triggered to dominate Prince Harry. And watch Harry's nervous body language as soon as she submits. That nervous look on his face, biting his lips, and his restless right leg are all clues that Harry immediately regretted fighting against Megan's persistent control. He's already thinking of the repercussions. He's panicking now about what's going to come when they get back into their private room about him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's on edge about something, and he's, he's probably going to be in trouble when he gets home. He's, he's in trouble when he gets home. Trying to dominate that situation. But dominating and controlling their partners is not the only thing narcissists do. Part of their controlling behavior is to silence their partners. Amber and Megan both showed signs of this. I was sort of not allowed to be right. Not allowed to have a voice. And we've seen countless... He wasn't allowed to have a voice. Does that sound familiar? Who's always talking about their voice? Megan, it's her voice is the only one that matters. My voice, they can't hear my voice. But when they would ask her questions, she never gave would give a solid answer or plans. It, <sighs> Let's continue. Examples of how Megan rudely interrupts Harry or just shuts him up completely. 
that part. Yeah. She interrupts him. She shuts him down. It's it's really rude how she treats him. Like here. Can you imagine? Interrupts Harry or just shuts him up completely. Like here. Can you imagine how little sense that makes? And our plan was to do this forever. Yeah, for us, for us. Our plan for me, I mean, I wrote letters to his family when I got there saying, I am dedicated to this. What Megan did here was to not only interrupt Harry, but to completely start her sentence again from the beginning. That is also typical of narcissists. But that's what people do when they want their point to be very well understood and they want to shut somebody else up. There's more narcissistic behaviors both these women display. Narcissists also want their partners to be dependent on them. One way to do this is to isolate them from the world. Yeah, that's definitely a red flag. If someone isolates you from your friends and family, it's because they, they want to control you. They want it so you, you don't have anywhere to go. You don't have a support system. So when they start tearing you down, you're de you're still dependent on only them. And you can't ask uh, your friends and family, you know what, you can't, you can't go to them and question the abusive partner's uh, abuse. They don't want you doing that. Because the, the family and friends are going to tell you, hey, you need to get out of that. Narcissists will stop at nothing to separate their partners or their victims from friends and family. In Johnny and Amber's court case, Johnny gave a heartbreaking testimony about how Amber tried to ruin his relationship with his kids. My kids are far more intelligent than I am, and they they broke. They wouldn't be around Miss Herodinelli. They refused to be around her <clears throat> anymore. And it is you know a lot of times kids can see right through narcissists. If you <laughs> if you want to know if somebody narcissist is, ask a kid. Ask a kid. Do you think they're friendly? Are they nice? Are they a nice person? Because narcissists, they're not nice to people that can't do anything for them. If you can't do anything for them, no. Nah. So kids and older people, people that are sick, they can't do nothing for the narcissist. So the narcissist is going to treat them bad. No secret that royal critics blame Meghan for causing the massive rift between Harry and his family. Harry's relationship with his family is so bad now that it doesn't look like there can ever be peace again. It seems that Amber and Meghan are both so controlling that they'll even take on the mother role over their partners. So at a certain point, what enters your mind is you start to slowly realize that you are in a relationship with your mother, in a sense. And we see literal examples of how Meghan uh yeah i've seen examples of megan holding on to that to him like he's a little kid like he's five y'all like he's five years old the way she touches him and prods him and pushes him like a kindergartner like here let me lead you over here <laughs> it's really odd and it's odd to me that she acts like she's Princess Diana. It's real. It's just so odd how she dresses like Princess Diana, how she talks about Princess Diana, how she has a clip of her hair. It's just really is is creepy. Okay, I've heard of her wearing uh, Princess Diana's perfume allegedly on their first date, and and how he talks about her. Oh, she's just like my mother. Where? I haven't seen it. The only thing that I've seen that her and Princess Diana have in common is they have pictures with poor kids. That's it. They both got pictures with poor kids. I don't see anything else. <laughs> There's nothing alike about them. The energy is different. Meg treats Harry like a kid. Like at this polo event, where she once again managed to shamelessly squeeze herself into the spotlight. Watch here how she wipes lipstick from Harry's face, just like a mom would do with their child. This was... 
And it it's just like, why, sis? Leave that man alone. Why? Why isn't she just on the edge, you know? Why are you in the middle? <laughs> Even if they asked you to be in the middle, I'd be like, no, I can't do that. I don't want to. I don't want to take the spotlight. Like, let him have the spotlight. I'm just cheering on and cheering him on. After the couple shared a kiss on stage, but even the way Megan pushes and directs Harry has a strong motherly touch to it. And one more thing about that kiss. Notice how Megan has her hand covering Harry's face? This may be another narcissistic trick for Megan to get all the focus on herself. When kissing, it's just like her hands are always in the way. When they showed the picture of the baby, her hands were there. It's like she always has hands on everybody. Now, I know some people are more affectionate, but it's just it's just so inappropriate. The times that she does it, it just it, it, it just screams, I need the attention on me. If you agree or disagree with any of this, please comment down below. Thank you. For the camera, cover the face of the other person so you will be the focus. Also, show off your new jewelry. If Megan really did it on purpose, surely no one else would be that desperate to steal the spotlight from their spouse, right? Or maybe Amber might. That's another narcissistic trait they both display. The need to be the absolute center of attention. That brings us back to Amber's fake smile. Here's one of the best examples of it. When everyone cheers Johnny at her premiere, narcissists can stand not being the most important person. The disgust in Amber's face is clear. But check out Megan's disgust when straight up told she is not the most important person. You're not the only powerful woman even in this, in this community. The first thing Megan does is something called reframing. This is when she brushes her hair out of her face. Her rapid blinking is another clue that she's offended. This is called eye blocking. According to behavioral expert Bruce Durham, it literally means Megan is trying to block the interviewer with her eyes. As much as narcissists don't like not- It's like, girl, have some humility. You're not the most important person in the world. Like, have a seat, ma'am. It's just uh, that flicker of the eyes. Like, it's okay. Like, <laughs> oh gosh. Not getting all the attention. They absolutely love being showered in compliments. And we see it with Amber and Megan also. <laughs> Blink and you'll miss it, but watch Amber's reaction closely when Jimmy Fallon gives her a compliment. Gorgeous here on the cover of uh, this magazine. Did you catch all the body language cues? Let's have an expert lay it out for us. Immediately when Jimmy says gorgeous, Amber's eyes widen in extreme interest. Her mouth opens in what seems to be her breath being taken away. She's rocking back and forth in her chair with eagerness to hear the compliment. She flicks her tongue out, but seems to be pressing it against the upper level of her teeth. It's like, girl, calm down. He just gave you a compliment. Good Lord. <laughs> and then also clasps her hands together in all what appears to be self-restraint. Now, watch Megan's similar reaction in this 27 interview when she gets a compliment from Craig Ferguson. Again, blink and you'll miss it. Wow, you look sensational. Thank you, Is that one of them swanky designer dresses? I got all dolled up for you. Megan shows the same... Wait, is this the same lady that doesn't like to wear eyelashes? And, um... Uh... <laughs> doesn't like to show her body she felt forced i felt forced on what is that what's that game show where they had to open the briefcases i felt forced to look sexy i, I felt forced do you feel forced here did someone force you to do this megan did someone force you to wear that outfit that's short and backless <laughs> I didn't use, I, didn't, I wasn't able to use my mind on, oh, deal or no deal. That's the name of the game show. <laughs> Bubbly, overexcited movement, as she can't seem to keep her body still. 
She also has that grin that seems sort of unnatural, and she tensely clenches her hands. The how Amber had to clasp her own hands together. In both cases, it just looks like they are trying too hard. Uh, uh, uh. The, oh God! It's like calm down. The fake laugh. <laughs> Both have also been accused in the press and on social media for either twisting the truth or flat out lying to either make themselves look good or look the victim. I'm not a, a good victim, I get it. I'm not a likable victim. I'm not a perfect victim. And it's no different for Megan, who constantly complains about how bad what... Narcissists always claim to be victims. They love victim role. They love it. They will exploit any type of uh, class that's been oppressed. Oh, I'm, I'm a woman. I'm black. Oh, my God. I'm being oppressed. They will. They'll use it for their own selfish reasons, for attention, for sympathy. It's disgusting. Royal life was and how unfair she was treated by the royal family and palace staff. She, she likes playing the victim. The moment she arrived in the royal household, she's been belly aching about being a victim. What I saw was a sense of, I am a victim. Look at me as a victim. This is also very much in tune with narcissism. I'm such a victim. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's how she tries to act. They were, they asked me what color my child's skin was gonna be. Because another thing narcissists love to do is to turn any accusation against them around and to blame it on someone else. And we all know what happened in Johnny and Amber's court case, where she accused him of all sorts of horrible things. Yet the jury believed that it was the other way around, that Amber was actually the aggressor and Johnny the victim. Just. A lot of times in narcissistic re relationships, you don't know who the victim is. If you're confused who the victim is, you're probably dealing with a narcissist in any relationship, whether that be work, friends, family, uh, couples. If, you, if you're confused who the victim is, usually it's because there's a narcissist involved. It's like the infamous case between Megan and Kate Middleton, when headlines said Megan made Kate cry at Megan's wedding. Did you make Kate cry? No, the reverse happened. Megan flipped the story around and pinned the blame on Kate. But body language experts are not convinced. Pay close attention to Megan's smirk and how the left corner of her lip pulls. Yeah, she seems pretty happy about that, that she's the one that cried. She just looks so happy there. Well, guys, um, if you want to go back and watch this, um, I'm about nine minutes in, so uh, there's still uh, a lot more minutes left. Uh, if you want to go watch this video, it's called Clues Meghan Markle and Amber Heard are Narcissists. Um, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. All right, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.